The multi-column notes is something that we use often in our room. We have them formatted right in the back of our journal. Um, the kids rely on them. They, they go back to those notes. They can find something very quickly. It's very organized um, and it's very you know, consistent. Every time they go to their multi-column notes, they're going to have a place for a formula. They're going to have a place for the vocabulary. There's a place to take notes and there's a place to show how it works. So by being able to do that and, and to have it very consistent, um, it, it helps them sort of clear things up and, and have a place to go back and find the answer when they can't remember how something works. The two column notes we use to problem solve. You know, we have our work on one set, you know, on one side of that page, but on the other side of the page, that really, um, it's almost the more important part because that reminds us how we did it or why we did it. You know, why did we square that or why did we use a radical there? What is the purpose of that? The third strategy we've used today so far is um, the quick write. And that's newer for us. That's something that we, we haven't done a lot of, but we're finding a lot of success with. And we use that to um, bring back information that maybe we haven't used in a long time or maybe haven't used a lot and want to make sure that we remember key vocabulary or um, a key process. Today we used it to pull back words like radical that we really haven't used in a couple of weeks. And this is still pretty early in the school year for us and so we're dealing with some rust. Um, and the kids are able to pull that information out and dust it off and work together to remind each other and before we know it, we're right back ready uh, to work on this new concept which is the Pythagorean Theorem. All right, guys, we're starting today with a quick write. Groups one, two, three, and four. You can work as a team. Brainstorm together, but you only have one and a half minutes. Are you ready? Go. And time's up. All right, are we ready? Yes? Question one. See what they said. Question one, what do you have for what does it mean to be squared? Um, to be equal, to multiply by itself. Mm -hmm. All right, good. What is a square root group to? Square root. Um, the factor times the same factor, and it equals the number. That's a little radical thing. Factor times the same factor. Equals the number that's in the radical. Equals a number in the radical? The number that is in the radical. The number that is in the radical. Okay, so is that what you mean? No. Can you come show me what you mean? The number is 25. Factor is 5 times the same factor. It equals that factor. It equals 25. Okay. So the square root of that is 5. So we could have the square root of 25 equals? Yeah. There you go. Nice. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. So hopefully we all have some um, a little bit of reminders now about some of the words we're going to need to work today. We're going to start out on the next slide beginning our work with the Pythagorean Theorem. How many of you have a memory of the Pythagorean um, Right now, there are four steps that we use. Um, we start by, by, I do a problem. I show them how it works. And then we take the next step, and I do a problem, but they're helping me with the problem. Then we switch the roles. I help them with the problem. And then they take the problem on their own, and they do the problem. So we're in a place right now where we're getting ready to sort of turn it over from them helping me to me helping them. That's where we are right now, but by the end of today, they'll be more independent, almost ready to be completely independent. That will be our goal. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow, maybe, if we're, if we're ready. All right, so, I have a six foot ladder. It is, pops out on the bottom, four feet out from the wall. You have to prop it out four feet from the wall. I want to know how high can I reach with that ladder. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. All right, and what do we do with that one we don't know? Just keep it as a variable. What's, 
that's the word I want. And we keep b as the variable. So how do I get b by itself? So if I subtract 16 mori from both sides, what do I get? I know you're thinking the right thing. I'm just going to put the right words in the right order. Anthony. Um, find the square root. The square root. That's it. That's it. What we do to one side, what's the rule, please? You've got to do to the other. That's the rule. What's my unit? Feet. Um, feet. Square. Is it feet squared? No. no. Why isn't it feet squared? Because we already undid the square. We did undo. We undid the square. How are we doing with this? Good. Are we ready to try this? No. No? Can we work yes. Out? yes. You can work with your partner. You can work in your group. That has to happen with every step you write. Make sure you show your thinking. The thinking goes with the steps, not after the steps. Okay? So take the time to do your thinking. Ladies, same with you. Make sure you're doing the thinking with your, your problems, okay? And you've shown me the steps there, but I want to see it here. I want it to be really clear that the square root of this equals the square root of this. Or take the... What's the other way to say it? We don't say radical it. We say take the square root. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to print this one off for you guys. The green's not good. Right. We're very fortunate. We have a number of technologies that are available to us. And we have um, a document camera in our classroom. We have an Eno board. Um, it's an interactive whiteboard in our classroom. And those two pieces of equipment have really changed the way that we can do things in our room. Uh, when I have a student who's working on something and um, they want to be able to show the class, they're not standing in front of the group with a small object. They go to the document camera, and the document camera projects it through our LCD projector right onto the whiteboard. We also can take pictures with the camera, not having to dig out something else. Boom, we, we push a button and we've got a, a picture saved that that student then puts in their portfolio. Um, we, can, we can do any number of things with it. Then we have the other, which is our interactive board, and that um, really has, has changed who's responsible in the front of the room. The kids come up and do the work. Um, I'm there to help, I'm there to facilitate, but it's no longer my responsibility. We have color to help us highlight our steps. Um, we can use the program or we can search the web. We can use anything you can use on a computer. That is a computer screen. And so it, it just changes all access to everything. As long as we have power, we can use that board. And um, when we don't, we miss it. <laughs> they could send me things. I can pull up anything because I have internet access for this. And they could send something and we could open it up and it would be right there in front of us. So it's really quite a resource, very flexible resource. It, it's changed a lot of things for us and it keeps them motivated on task and engaged. The technology and the literacy strategies together, uh, those two things allow us to go beyond paper and pencil. They promote our thinking, they promote, um, they promote our sharing together, and we found them to be powerful. We, I also, um, I don't just teach math, I teach social studies, and the, the Eno board, um, the document camera, the literacy strategies, there isn't a content area where they can't be used. They're appropriate everywhere because it's not content specific, it's about thinking. You know, the technology is to support our thinking and the literacy strategies help us look at our thinking. You know, how do we record what we're thinking about or what we're trying to learn? And that's really what they are. They help us process. And so that's appropriate everywhere.